on those concerns that someone was spying on the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich. Ukraine, as you heard, is launching a criminal investigation. And in the U.S., federal investigators visited the home and office of one of the key players, a Trump supporter named Robert Hyde. He says that text messages imply that Ivanovich was being watched, and these text messages were a joke. John Herbs was the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine from 2003 to 2006, and he's now the director of the Eurasia Center at the Atlantic Council in Washington. He joins me for today's Ukraine debrief. Thank you very much for joining the program, Ambassador. Good to have you. My pleasure. Thank you. You obviously have a singular perspective on this issue, having been the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine yourself. So what was your reaction when you heard the Ukrainian government announced that they were going to undertake a criminal investigation about whether or not one of your successes was spied on? Well, certainly an American ambassador in Ukraine is, is used to being spied on by the Russians and maybe by other intelligence services. The possibility that the ambassador is being spied on by a private American is outrageous. Well, of course, we don't know if this was simply ridiculous bragging by the part of Mr. Hyde or real. But the Ukrainians seem to be taking this seriously, or the, the Minister of Interior seems to be taking this seriously. Mm. And Ambassador, how, how unique and unprecedented would it be, I don't want to speculate too much, but if in fact it was proven that the, that the U.S. was spying on its own ambassador? Well, I don't know if you could say that the U.S. would be spying on its ambassador. It would be this individual, and maybe he thought he was okay. doing someone's bidding. And again, if this is true, it's outrageous. But it's not clear that it's true. Again, it could just be uh, ridiculous bragging. Mm -hmm. uh, could you give us some insight into some of the challenges that you face as an ambassador? Because from, from the outside hearing about this, the, the idea of somebody encountering physical surveillance of, of people watching them and spying on them obviously sounds extreme. So what is it like to be in that position? Well, anyone who worked at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow in Soviet times or under Putin's regime mm. is used to being spied on by Russian special services. And the Russian special services reach deeply into Ukraine. And I know I was being watched closely by Moscow's agents when I was ambassador in Ukraine. We know that that was true also in recent years when Marcia Ivanovich was there or Jeff Pyatt. So we're used to that. What is completely incredible is the notion, again, that an American would be spying on the American ambassador in a foreign country. Mm. So hopefully the story is not true. If it is, it needs to be thoroughly investigated. In your experience, when you were ambassador in Ukraine, did you get the feeling that you were being spied on in the circumstances that you outlined? Sure. At least twice, Russian media carried transcripts of my phone calls with Ukrainians. But I did not need the, them to publish these transcripts to know that I was being watched. Right. Now, Ukraine obviously are trying to take responsibility for this. They don't want to uh, violate the Vienna Convention, I believe, which protects other diplomats and ambassadors in, in the country that we're discussing, which is here, Ukraine. The fact that the U.S. State Department haven't commented on this, I, I believe they still haven't commented on this. How do you interpret that? Well, I think it would be a good thing if the department mm. as an institution or a senior department official were to say that the concept of uh, an American ambassador being spied upon by American citizens is outrageous, should be prevented, and in mm. fact, if it happened, the individual responsible should be prosecuted. Now, the Ukrainians have asked the American government, the State Department, for assistance in this investigation. Would the State Department be keeping their involvement in this fairly secretive, or would it be likely that they would come out and declare that they're going to be helping in this investigation? Because obviously we don't always know what's going on because some of these things are highly sensitive. Uh, it's, it's hard to say. I could see a reason why they'd want to do this uh, discreetly. But it's also true, right. again, given the unfair treatment of Ambassador Yovanovitch, a statement by the department or a senior official is completely required, is completely in order. Mm -hmm. What impact, um, if any, do you feel like the impeachment proceedings that are going on in the United States are having in Ukraine, in, in government circles and in, in the population? Well, the, the, the key point here is this. American interests demand strong, strong support for Ukraine as it fights Kremlin aggression. Because Putin's, Putin's objectives go well beyond Ukraine and threaten major American interests. The impeachment fight here has given um, life 
to crazy anti-Ukrainian narratives regarding um, Ukraine's interfer alleged interference in our 2016 election or regarding um, the alleged bad activity of Vice President Biden when he was in fact fighting corruption. And this false narrative or these false narratives can undermine American support for Ukraine. It hasn't happened yet. I don't think it will happen. But nonetheless, it's a potential danger. And the Ukrainians recognize this, which is why they are deeply concerned by the impeachment fight. John Hurst, former ambassador to the Ukraine, thank you very much for joining thank us you. today on the program. Really appreciate your insights.